Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Maggie and I have a story that I'd like to read to you today. The story that I have picked out is called Bear's Shadow. And I picked this story out because I am willing to bet lots of you have wondered about your shadows before. Have you ever seen your shadow outside on a sunny day? I bet that you have. Your shadow, where do you always find it when you're outside on a sunny day? Where do you notice your shadow? You notice it on the ground, don't you? You're right. The way that you make a shadow is when something blocks light. So when you are outside on a sunny day, the sun is high up in the sky and you are standing outside. And if you were to look down at the ground, you would notice the outline of yourself is all black on the pavement or the ground. That is called your shadow. And the reason you see it is because you are standing and you are blocking <clears throat> the sunlight from hitting the ground that's right in front of you. So instead of the sun hitting the ground in front of you, it is you are the object that is creating the shadow. And in our story today, we are going to meet a bear <clears throat> and he is very frustrated with his shadow and he wants to get rid of it. It's not easy to get rid of your shadow because as long as the sun is somewhere up in the sky, you are going to be casting a shadow somewhere down on the ground. So let's read about this story and Bear and what he does to get rid of his shadow. And then afterward, we're going to use a flashlight and I'm going to show you how you can create your own shadows on the wall. Bear Shadow, written and illustrated by Frank Ash. Bear Shadow. One day, Bear went down to the pond with his fishing pole and a big can of worms. While he was putting a worm on his hook, he looked down and saw a big fish. I'm going to catch that fish, thought Bear to himself. But when Bear stood up to throw his line in the water, his shadow scared the big fish away. Go away, shadow, cried Bear. But Bear's shadow would not go away. Okay, said Bear. If you won't go on your own, then I'll just have to get rid of you. And he put down his fishing pole and began to run. He ran around the pond. When he got to the other side, he kept on running. I wonder, have you ever done this with your shadow? Have you ever been outside on a sunny day and noticed your shadow and tried to run away from it? Does it ever work? No, the shadow always stays with you. He ran through a field of flowers, jumped over the brook, and hid behind a tree. Good, thought Bear. Now Shadow can't find me. And do you notice that you don't see the shadow of the bear anymore? So the sun is back here, and the tree is blocking the sunlight. So the tree's shadow is on the ground and the bear is hiding in the shadow there. So you can't see the bear's shadow, but you see the tree's shadow. <gasps> but bear was wrong. When he stepped out from behind the tree, the first thing he saw was shadow. Nearby was a cliff. Bear walked over to the cliff and looked up. I'll climb so high, shadow won't be able to follow me, thought bear. What do you think? Is the shadow going to be able to follow him? Bear climbed higher and higher until at last he pulled himself up to the top. Huffing and puffing, he smiled with pride. Then he looked down and saw shadow. Now Bear was very annoyed. So he went home and got a hammer and some nails to nail his shadow to the ground. He hammered and hammered and hammered, but no, many, no matter how many nails he hammered, he couldn't nail his shadow down. If I can't nail him down, thought Bear, maybe I can bury him. So. 
he got his shovel and he dug a hole. When the hole was deep and wide, he let his shadow fall in the hole. Then Bear filled in the hole with dirt. When he was finished, it was almost noontime. When it's noontime, the sun is straight up in the sky. So the sun was high in the sky and Shadow was nowhere to be seen. <gasps> At last, sighed Bear, no more Shadow. So the bear thought that he really did bury his shadow when in fact at noontime when the sun is all the way up straight up into the sky, the sun is shining down right on you on top of your head and then there is no shadow because there is nothing to be blocking the light. But as the sun moves through the sky, as I'm sure you've noticed that it does that, that's when it will create different shadows. But when the sun is straight up around noontime, right up at the top of the sky, and it shines right down, it doesn't cast a shadow. So Bear thinks that he has gotten rid of his shadow. And now Bear's very tired, so he went inside and took a little nap. While he slept, time passed by, and the sun once again cast shadows everywhere. So you can see the sun moving in the sky just like it does outside in our world. The sun moves during the day and as it moves take a look at the ground and look at the shovel. So here the sun is shining straight down no shadow. Here the sun is shining straight down and it's casting a shadow again and then as the sun moves through the sky you can notice that the shadow is getting a little bit longer because it's casting a longer shadow as it's moving through the sky. I bet you've noticed when you've been outside that some days your shadows are really, really long and sometimes they're really, really short. And that depends on the time of day that you go outside and where the sun is. When Bear got up and opened his door, he saw the shadow on the floor and he said not you again exclaimed bear and he slammed the door hoping to lock shadow inside but shadow was too quick hmm sighed bear how about this if you let me catch a fish I'll let you catch one too nod your head like this if it's a deal and when Bear nodded his head, Shadow nodded his head too. So when Bear went back to the pond and once again threw his line in the water, by this time the sun was in a different part of the sky, which made it easy for Shadow to keep his part of the deal. If you remember, Earlier in the day when Bear went fishing, the sun was over here and it was casting the shadow inside the pond, which made Bear think that the shadow scared the fish away. But now the sun has moved and it's casting its shadow on the ground and it's keeping Bear out of the pond. And when Bear caught that big fish, take a look, shadow caught one too. The end. Hi everyone! What I decided to do was to take my camera outside and make some shadow puppets here on my driveway for you. Shadows are so much fun and you can have lots of fun using them in lots of different ways for playing and learning. One thing that my kids love to do is they love to play shadow tag when they are outside. So that is a fun game that you can play. Another thing that is fun to do is to trace with shadows. So you can get your chalk and go out on your driveway or your sidewalk and someone can stand and you can have your shadow be traced. You can make different body parts and movements with your shadows. You can dance with your shadows. You can bring things outside and trace them and color them in. But I wanted to show you some 
shadow puppets that you can make either inside or outside. If you are outside, all you need is the sun and the ground or some sort of pavement. If you are inside, you need a flashlight, a dark room, and a blank wall. So the first shadow puppet that I wanna show you is how to make a dog. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hands like this and you're gonna put them together. And then you're gonna take your pointer fingers and you're gonna tuck them in and you're gonna kinda use this as your little mouth and your thumbs are going to be your ears. And can you see that I have a little dog down there? He's saying bark, 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 just like that. So there is a little dog that you can make with his floppy little ears and he's barking like that. Another shadow puppet that you can make is a bird. And what you'll do for this one is you just take your hands like this and you're going to cross them. It's kind of hard to see like that. And these are gonna be your wings. And if you can use your thumbs to sort of be the beak for your bird, and your bird can be flapping in the breeze and it can be singing or tweeting or singing a song. So we have a bird. What else can we do? Another animal we can do is a crab or a spider. So for this, you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna cross them and you're going to kind of cup your thumbs a little bit and spread out your fingers. And if you wiggle them, it looks like you have a little crab crawling along the sand, or maybe a spider crawling up the wall. How about we do one more? How about we do a moose or a deer? This is pretty easy. You can put your hand like this and you kind of scrunch all your fingers together. That's gonna make the moose's head. And then you're gonna take your other hand and you're just gonna cup it at the top to make some antlers. So that way your moose has some antlers or your deer right there. Pretty fun. I hope that you take some time to get outside and look at your shadow and notice if it's long or if it's short. Notice what time of the day it is and then play and learn with your shadow. Run around and see if you can get away from your shadow. I bet that you can't but I hope you have a lot of fun learning and playing with all the things that are outside. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.